Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. Um, firstly, the title of this video is The Return to Frogmore. Now, for anyone who's new to my channel or anybody who uh, is looking for definitive evidence, um, this video is not that. This is very much an opinion piece. So I just wanted to cut to the chase on that first because there's a few other things I'm going to cover. I hate it when people do sort of clickbaity things, do you know what I mean? And you watch the whole darn video and it's right at the end and it turns out to be really a big puff of nothing. So this is my opinion and this is the direction that I see things going in and I will explain that in more detail in a minute. Firstly, yes, well done a lot of people who identified Sir Tim Berners-Lee as the, uh, what is credited as the inventor of the World Wide Web. And as Maureen pointed out, there's a difference between the World Wide Web and the internet and networking. Networking has never been one of my specialities. I'm not a computer science expert by any means. <laughs> I am more into what is known as netiquette. Ever since 1993, when my boyfriend first invent, uh, introduced me to the internet, yes, we were very childish. Yes, we went on some forums and chat rooms and we said outrageous things, which we thought were hilarious. And we got over it, rolling around all over the floor in laughter after about 11 minutes. So fast forward 20 odd years, um, <laughs> or is it long? No, 30 years now, oh my God. Um, when I see other people finally realising there's a thing called the internet, and believe it or not, there are some people who, who've just discovered it, I see them going through the same netiquette process um, that I went through years and years and years ago. Um, but yes, Sir Tim Berners-Lee is largely credited as the father of the internet, even though the internet and the World Wide Web are two different things technically. And I wasn't really trying to get into technicalities, I just felt it's important, especially for sugars or... Perhaps celebrities out there paying for bots to slag people off, dox people, bully people. I don't know. I thought it was important for those kind of people to realise or at least be aware of his name. So well done to all of you guys. I think the most excellent comment on that video was from one of you that said, I know the guy you mean, but I just can't think what his name is. <laughs> I thought that was a brilliant comment and brutally honest um, and I've made sure from a very early age my kids are aware of who Sir Tim Berners-Lee is. Oh and he's an old biddy apparently according to a lot of sugars and I'm not including Megan fans, Megan supporters, I mean sugars by, I don't know, paid little trolls, nasty little trolls, um, <laughs> so they'd consider him an old biddy, he's in his 60s. Who knew that eh? You wouldn't be on Facebook, you wouldn't be working on a bot farm. You wouldn't be a troll if it wasn't for that old biddy, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, who I salute all day long. He's a living legend. Um, the Netflix thing, if anybody watched the video of, of our horror last night on Graham's channel, um, here come the WhatsApps. I, it's been absolute radio silence all morning, and as soon as I start recording, I'm just waiting for the cat to start a fight with another cat, or all my kids will suddenly decide they want to come and invade the kitchen. Um, Yes, I cancelled Netflix last night. I told all the kids, they were all of the same opinion. They said, it's a load of rubbish. We've seen everything. Um, and I signed up for HBO. That's not to say HBO won't have the odd dodgy show on it. I don't know. But I did discover a thing called The Gilded Age. And I was really enjoying it. And I stayed up till about four o'clock in the morning watching that, cleansing my mind of whatever the hell Netflix thought they were doing by putting that hideous crime show on which included quite graphic child torture. That was it, cancelled it. And I won't be going back to it until, hi kitty, until Netflix realise and fire a few people who think that sort of thing's acceptable. Or, for example, allegedly spending 100 million on two of the most boring people ever. Um, so that's that. <laughs> now, I was very cheered up by watching one of Lady C's latest videos because she intimated that there will be evidence forthcoming about the connection between paid bot farms, Christopher Boozy and Harry and Meghan. Uh, I think 
I'm correct in saying she was referring to Samantha Markle's trial that's coming up. And I pray to God, I pray to God that if that is the case, that the truth comes out, especially in light of the young lady who recently took her life and other people who even consider taking their life because of online bullying. If Meghan and Harry in any way, shape or form have been behind that and I see concrete and I mean concrete, court worthy evidence, Nate the lawyer is close. But if you listen to his videos carefully, he's, he's a lawyer and he's very careful not to say it is 100% knocked down, you know, in stone. So although we all may suspect it and may think we know it, there's a massive difference between court ready knowing it. Anyway, so that's that covered. Also watched a wonderful documentary about our old king here in Spain. We have two kings and two queens, sort of. We have King Carlos and Queen Sophia, who I adore. I love Queen Sophia. And their son, King Felipe and Queen Leticia. Um, it was a very interesting documentary about the evolution of Spain. This country that we live in relatively recently was under a dictatorship. That dictator, Francisco, uh, Frank, Fran, Frank, Francis, Franz, Francisco Franco, uh, brought King Carlos, King Juan Carlos, back to Spain, put him on the throne. And it's a fascinating documentary how King Carlos explains, you know, he was a dictator. I had to do what he wanted. But once Franco died, King Carlos was instrumental in helping Spain become a democracy including legalising the Communist Party, because the king said you must have the left, you must have the right, you must have all parties represented. And he unfortunately has been falling to scandal and smear campaigns in recent years, bless him, even though he is in advanced years. So uh, that's that one. Also, I will do specific videos. It was my son's idea of a, like a shout out Sunday or something for new newer YouTubers. There is one apparently called Royally Blonde. Now I have watched her uh, one or two of her videos. <laughs> Feel free to check that one out. Right. To come to the nub of this video, I can see it on the horizon, a return to Frogmore. I really can. Uh, and I hate to break it to you all, but for me, it, that's on the cards. I could be completely wrong. This is only my opinion. And how I see things having arrived at the age of 52 and having seen one or two things. As far as I can see, Harry and Meghan's life outside of the royal family has not been very successful. I think we can all agree. Her book, The Bench, do we even hear her talking about it? Her 40 by 40 project, do we even hear anybody talking about that? So many new projects have come and gone. Oprah, yeah, that was a big poof, and then it was gone. Of course, there are still ramifications and things overhanging, unfortunately, for Meghan and Harry. Not really for the royal family, if anything. It made the royal family and monarchies in general, it argued a good case for them and increased their popularity. Um... I have, as you know, felt for some time that the marriage is on the rocks, but unless, and again, this is only my own opinion, unless Meghan can bag herself a billionaire, um, I can see them continuing a marriage of convenience and saying to themselves, the coffers have gone down. Uh, what are we going to do? We can't afford security. We can't afford this lifestyle. We did pay back the 2.4 million for Frogmore sod it will be get the security if we're living there and i can see that i'm not talking about a return to royal public life although i'm sure they would both try that i don't think that the royal family would entertain that idea for a moment but if they really truly have paid back the 2.4 million because harry said he was going to whether he has or not i don't know um but let's say he has then I could see him saying, well, I've paid for it and I want to move back in. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, well, Princess Eugenie, Eugenie is living there at the moment, but uh, they split their time between Portugal and, and there. 
and uh, there's talk of them going to America or something. Perhaps Megan has persuaded her to move to America so she can slip straight back into Frogmore Cottage. But I can see that's the way it's going. Now, the reason I see that is not only that I see physically in the faces and body language of Harry and Meghan that all is not well in the marriage. Things have not worked out how they thought. Um, I, uh, I don't believe that his book is as popular as they say. Interestingly enough, my daughter signed up for a free audio copy and I was with her when she signed up and it definitely said it was free. She checks her Revolut yesterday and they tried to take €14.95 Euros from her bank. Luckily, the Revolut went, uh-uh, and, and I think maybe she didn't have enough money in there or something, but she's blocked Audible now. Don't think that's cheeky. And I was there with her, and we went through all the T's and C's to be absolutely certain that it was free. And then they try and charge afterwards. Needless to say, none of us listened to it. I, I think she listened to the first chapter of it, said, oh, he sounds like Gordon Ramsay, I suppose, and that was her only take on it. And she said, oh, he's just complaining about everything. So, and I never listened to any of it. I still haven't read it. No intention. <laughs> and uh, none of the books have turned up because everything's been, being diverted to Aldershot. Long story. Can't get post to jib at the moment. Um, now, if Harry did inherit at least $30 million from Diana... To you, me, and all of us, that's an unspeakably large amount of money. But if after six months, let's say we all had 30 million in the bank, and I totally agree with Sue Smith on this, we've been in full agreement on this one for months. If you were to suddenly wake up six months later and you're down to 11 million, that's quite scary, isn't it? It's not the amount that you initially start with, it is the, um, the, the amount of time it goes down because even a fool like Harry can think, if I've lost that much money in six months, I've probably only got five left and I'm gonna be broke. And I do believe that the finances have been difficult for them. I have never bought into the 100 million Netflix. I never bought into the ridiculous 30 million or whatever it was, Spotify. These companies are not quite that stupid. Um, those are highly inflated, exaggerated, ridiculous, ludicrous figures. Um, and these sorts of things happen. Uh, so I don't buy that at all. Beyond their Netflix documentary, uh, the mock you series, I don't really see what else they've got to offer in the way of sales. Although the Invictus games are a worthy cause and it's excellent in its own context, Unfortunately, the truth of the matter is that type of goodness, pureness and excellent um, worthy cause and impressive athletes is not going to generate the same money that dirt and gossip do. And that's what Harry and Meghan have been trading off, dirt and gossip. Whether they realise it or not, that is exactly, and I'm sure they do realise it, I'm sure at least Meghan realises it. Um, so I can see them sitting there panicking probably at each other's throat, largely. Put yourself in her shoes just for a minute. I know none of you are like Megan, but just put yourself in her shoes for a minute. Uh, you left the palace, you had gazillions of money, everybody wanted to know what you were gonna do. There was all the anticipation from certain quarters. You've blown your bomb. It didn't work out quite as you thought. You're running out of money. What is your option? Well, I would suggest Frogmore. So don't be as shocked at all if you see headlines or puff pieces starting to say they'd like to return to Frogmore because the evil royals won't give them security, but at least if they go back to their prison cell, they'll get security, I suppose, for the sake of the children. Don't be surprised if you start seeing that kind of PR. Because I would imagine there's a lot of stress going on within their four walls at the moment. And uh, if they've paid the 2.4 million, I guess it's a free house. I don't know if they charge them rent or not. It is on Crown property. Might be a nominal rent. Um, so, and also I see that their fan base, not Sugars, Meghan and Harry fans, who bought into the whole uh, in love, escaping the palace, didn't someone once upon a time use an expression, finding freedom? Um, 
they are now angry and annoyed at Harry and Meghan and calling them hypocrites because they're like, why would you even want to go to the coronation? You escaped the evil racist royals. Why would you want to do that? And so there is a suspicion growing within their, let's call it an organic, genuine fan base who bought into all the, the stuff they were selling. And now looking at the situation, and I think the tipping point was Harry saying, no, it was never an allegation of racism. No, 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 no. It's just unconscious bias. Totally different thing. Totally different thing. So, um, as always, I look forward to hearing your thoughts and opinions. But yes, I reckon if she can't bag herself a billionaire, in my opinion, uh, she is going to have to stick it out with him. What else is she going to do? Yeah, she could go for a divorce. That's, uh, she won't win down that road. Apart from anything else, let's say <laughs> that the royal family were foolish enough to throw away a figure like 50 million, which, in my opinion, again, was her testing the water, puff pieces to see, oh, will they bite for 50 million? Then they're not going to. They're not going to at all. Um, I, 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 she's, apart from the money side of things, if anyone out there is unfamiliar with the story... And although it's not an identical story, I can draw similarities between Sir Paul McCartney and Heather Mills. Now, Heather Mills walked away with a healthy chunk from that divorce, but she was trashed. She was absolutely trashed by everybody um, and had a very tough time. And if Meghan thinks she's unpopular now, boy, try divorcing a Windsor and see how that works out for you, even if you become so rich. You'd have to become rich enough, have plastic surgery, the whole bloody thing, never show your face again. And thankfully, it didn't quite work out like that for Heather. She sort of pulled her head in, opened a restaurant, she gets on doing her own thing now. Um, but she was trashed because she was divorcing a beloved beetle. Um, and Megan will find herself very quickly on the receiving end. I bet you there are doors slamming shut in their faces left, right and centre at the moment. They are probably experiencing what it feels like, as we say in Britain, to be somewhat off of the Christmas card list or party invitations, shall we say. I doubt they're getting any invitations to red carpets, which brings me to a little bit more of a cheerful subject. But the BAFTAs coming up. I can't wait to see what the Princess of Wales will be wearing. I hope she wears something like the gold dress. So that's that's something I'm really looking forward to. I think that's in about a week. I think it's the BAFTAs, is it? Yeah, that's a British one, isn't it? Because there's so many of these award ceremonies now. I get muddled. As always, thank you very much for listening all the way to the end. What do you think they'll do if she can't find a replacement for Harry and he's running out of money what would you do if you were in her shoes?